In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of political identity. Back in the 1960s, Philip Converse observed that people's positions expressed preferences on issues were somewhat fluid. They might change over time, and they might even contradict each other in different time periods. Those issue positions, he found, were driven more by identity concerns rather than preference. Those identity concerns may be partisan or social or, or belonging to a geographic community. Those were driving people's issue preferences and not other rational concerns. In recent years, there's been a lot of research into this phenomenon, how that has been increasing. In particular, Liliana Mason, a political scientist in her book, Uncivil Agreement, noted that people's political identities have started merging with their social identities, which is causing problems for politics. What exactly are we talking about here and how does this work? Well, your identity is how you see yourself as a person, how you express yourself, and, and how you position yourself in the world. Typically, people would have two different sets of those. Their political identity might be who they identify with politically. It could be a party or a candidate and positions on certain issues. Those would be unrelated to how people see themselves socially. For example, the music they listen to, where they're from, the type of car they drive, their leisure pursuits, the sports they follow. Typically, those are separate and they have been for a long time. Until around 2004 or so, that started to change. What happened was that there was a, a sorting effect where people's political identities and their social identities started to get mashed up together. And you might have two voters, two, two people in this, in this uh, hypothetical example. One might have a, a, a political leaning towards a, the blue party, another one might identify with the red party. Um, those are different. They might have different issue preferences and different voting intention. However, socially, there might be some things they have in common. Maybe they spend their leisure time the same way. Maybe they're in the same geographic community. Maybe they listen to the same music or drive the same type of car. So despite having different political identities, there might be several social identities that they share. So in that context, even though you might disagree with somebody politically, you still have a lot in common. Well, what's been happening and observed by Liliana Mason is that people's social identities are getting merged with their political identities. And what that means is the people that identify with the red political party have a lot more in common socially with one another. And their social identities tend to be intertwined with that political preference. Same goes for the folks that identify with the blue party. They are becoming much more alike and sharing the same social identity expressions. And so the blue political supporters are socially a lot more alike than they, uh, than they would have in common with anybody that supports the red side. Probably a few things that they might identify with socially, maybe, maybe a restaurant or something, but not much. There is a sorting of two social political groups. And what does that mean for, for governance and trying to run a political system? Well, in this environment, where people that support the red party are very much alike, people that support the blue party are very much alike, and those two groups have nothing in common, it's very difficult to relate to your political opponents, especially in a, in a system that requires compromise and negotiation. You're less likely to see their positions as legitimate when they are so different from you socially. Um, what this does, it tends to drive affective polarization. The difference is based on feeling, and the polarization that's based on that partisan affect rather than any meaningful issues. Um, obviously, it's way more difficult to govern. It's, it's more contentious in an environment like this. And we can think in North America about the debates over wearing masks or vaccines. These are very much driven by the fact that social identities and political identities are intertwined. In that context, disagreement, disagreement on an issue isn't seen as just disagreement on an issue, but rather it's seen as an attack on your personal identity. When your political identities and your social identities are linked, anybody that disagree with, agrees with you isn't really just disagreeing with you in terms of policy, they're actually disagreeing with you as a person. And that triggers an identity defensiveness response, which really exacerbates the problem, makes governing much more difficult.